This is a month of tests. This is a month of being patient. Let me say that Shah Afandi a few years ago, he said, those ones, those Muslims, that they don't fall under the category that you are exempted from fasting. And they don't fast. The food that they eat, in reality, it is haram. Because it is haram to eat in the daytime for the Muslim who qualifies, a regular Muslim, healthy, blah, 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 to carry the fast. If you are insisting, and there are so many Muslims who are doing that, if you are insisting to know that anything haram, it is forbidden to us, it is harmful to us. So to know the food that you eat and the f drinks that you drink is going to bring you sickness, nothing else. New style now. The people a little bit sick, a little bit this, a little bit that, especially in America. They say, I'm not going to fast. I'm not going to fast. Then where is the test? Yeah, where is the test? Uh, Alhamdulillah, we come from tropical countries where fasting is something else. Yeah, by midday, you're already dead. You sweat so much, everything, you feel the hunger, you feel the thirst. Still in America, there is so much blessings. Tell me, one of you, you really feel hunger that you're going to faint during the month of Ramadan. Say. Or you really feel that you're going to die from thirst. Say. You're a little bit thirsty, tired. You can still go take cold shower, wet your head a little bit and rest, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what. There are millions of Muslims who on normal days, they don't have anything to eat. And in Ramadan, not only they're fasting, but they're working hard, labor. Millions in China. Millions in India. Millions in Africa. Millions elsewhere in the world. And Allah is looking at those ones. He's not really looking at us. That we have everything, and we are more and more spoiled. A little bit discomfort, I'm not going to fast. A little bit discomfort, then that's okay. Now where is the challenge? Where is the feeling that you are sacrificing something? No feeling. No sacrifice, no faith. So now, that is a food and drink part of fasting. Fasting, if you think fasting is just staying away from food and drink and uh, relations, close relations between man and wife, that is what fasting is. Then we say, if you take a dog and you tie him under a tree, don't give it a wife, don't give it uh, food or drink, the dog is also fasting. So that kind of fasting is still at a low animal level of fasting. We are created not as animals. We are created as Hazrati Insan, to represent Allah. We are created in this month to experience what the angels they are experiencing. Because Hazrati Insan, Hazrati Insan means what? Hazrat means what? Holy. The holiness. Insan means man. Holy man. Say which religion they say man is holy. Holy man. Man is created holy. But in Islam, every man, woman, meaning humans, they are created holy. And Hazrat Insan, in the month of Ramadan, we're made to experience something that the angels are experiencing because the angels, they don't eat, they don't drink, they don't have relations, they just worship. So what happens when you start worshipping? If you're still stuck in the animal level, you think that the energy that comes to yourself, to your body, it is coming from the food and the drink that you eat. Isn't it? Shaykh Mawlana is saying something really simple. Then, take a dead body, give it food and drink. Push food and drink in its mouth, is going to come alive? No. If you're a believer, you know that the energy is not coming from the food and the drink. It is coming from the spirit. So it's a different energy now coming from the spirit. And if you are able now to not eat and drink, a different kind of angelic power comes to your spirit. 
Man, not lower than angel. Men are higher than the angel. If he moves away from his animal characteristics, if he moves close to his animal characteristics, he's lower than the angels, lower than the animal. We are created that even the angels made prostration to us, bowed down to us. And the Ramadan is an open invitation to every believer to remember their Lord and to try to understand this spiritual energy that is coming to you, not from food and drink, but from worshipping. Because you stay away just from food and drink, just to remember your Lord, it is considered a worship. Now, but that is still the animal aspect. What is the fast of someone who stays away food and drink? He prays, he does everything, but he still has those dirty, egoistic characteristics that he is not trying to change, that gets even worse during the Ramadan. You'll see some people during Ramadan is the natural state. When your body is weak, you don't have too much energy to fight back, to be angry. So you just, by default, you halim and salim. Eh. But some people, because they are hungry and thirsty, they become more upset, more angry, more arrogant, more stubborn. You start seeing people, their different nature starts to come up, worse that you don't see it in other times. Why is that? Shaitan is locked up during this time, but Shaitan trained our ego so good that Shaitan can go take a vacation in Jahannam and he leaves the ego to take over and to run everything better. Yeah. So, <laughs> we should watch out now. If we eat and we drink, doing forbidden things during the month of Ramadan, and if that becomes a sickness to us, imagine now, if we let our ego to go wild, our animal characteristics to go wild, we become more stubborn and more upset, more angry and more arrogant in this month. Imagine what kind of spiritual sickness you're going to have. What kind of sickness you're going to have outside of the month of Ramadan. Eleven months you're going to have that. May Allah protect us from that. When a man thinks, he pulls himself out from that situation. Because if you're in that situation, you cannot think. When you are hungry and thirsty, that allows you time to think. Because now your emotions is not mixed up with that. You're too tired. You pull yourself out and you start thinking about your life. You start thinking, what happened? You start thinking your mistakes. You start thinking, what are the things I want to get rid of? But this kind of thought too, you don't find it too much anywhere. Message it in so many nations, governments in so many nations. Concentrating when the Ramadan comes, that's the time to eat and to drink as much as you want. To go shopping, to change everything, to spend and to waste money, meaning to let your ego to run wild. Taught from 7 years old to 70 years old. They will stay up whole night to fix their house for the Bayram the next day. Eh, it's pretty good still. You're doing something to celebrate, but when it becomes extreme, it's no good. You're fixing your house. Are you fixing your house in paradise? You're fixing your house in this dunya, which after you pass, everything will be taken away from you. But that house in Jannah, the house in paradise is forever. Are you fixing it? Are you thinking today? Just very simple. The way that so many people say, oh, today I'm going to put new curtains, new uh, furniture in my house. Say today, what I'm going to build in my palace in paradise. <coughs> I'm going to put more nice things. So let me sit down and let me make 100 times Salah to Sharifah.
Let me make 100 times astaghfirullah. Let me think and look at myself today. If anything I did really is for the sake of Allah. You start thinking, you start fixing, you start curing 11 months, it will be more open to you. May it be open to us, inshallah. These are some of the teachings of a Sahib al-Sayf that we have taken and we are putting in our lives and we see some changes in our lives, more openings. It doesn't mean now that shaitan is not going to go running crazy to try to sabotage you, try to make you go crazy. In fact, it's going to do that. The more you're trying to be good, the more they're going to try to pull you away. That is also a test. Go in and go out. Don't stay there. People get a little bit upset. Go in and go out. Do not stay there. If you stay there, you may burn everything that you've collected so far. So may Allah tawfiq as much as enough for you and me. Al Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.